We, the petitioners, approached the Supreme Court when five well-known lawyers, journalists, and civil rights activists were arrested across the country on the 28th of August and charged with abetting acts of terror under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Our intention was to draw the attention of the judiciary to what we believe is a case of gross misuse of the state's powers under the draconian law of the UAPA. Our history as a republic shows that if left unchecked, such misuse causes grave injustices and endangers the civil liberties of all Indians. Those arrested on the 28th of August have been accused of being implicated in acts of terrorism. However, we believe that there are two kinds of terrorism, both of which create fear and undermine the foundations of our democracy. One is the violent acts of those described as terrorists who plant bombs, instigate people to be violent, engineer riots, and deliberately spread fear through their actions. And the second is the illegal or unjustified acts of state functionaries who instead of pursuing the actual perpetrators of violence, misuse their powers to harass those who do not conform to the politics of their current masters. When the state uses anti-terror laws without adequate proof against persons known to be working for the rights of the weaker sections of society, it is also spreading a kind of terror. Arbitrary arrests on implausible charges, like those of the 28th of August, are a source of anxiety for us all. They mean that the police can walk into our homes and arrest us either with, without a warrant or a warrant written in a language we do not understand and then accuse us of activities about which we know nothing. It has always been assumed that a genuine democracy will respect the constitutional and legal rights of every citizen, including the right to hold opinions different from, or even in opposition to, those of the government of the day. Since the arrests follow similar arrests made in June, the arrests of the 28th of August point to a continuing attempt to those rights. Our petition was essentially an appeal to the Supreme Court to check this erosion of rights and protect the liberty and dignity of human rights activists. We, the petitioners, are pleased to note that at least the liberty and dignity of the human rights activists has, for the time being, not been jeopardized, and the Supreme Court has protected the same. That is the content of the statement.